In this tutorial, I will explain how to develop AVRM applications for mobile phones. You must be familiar with how to develop AVRM applications for desktop devices in order to watch this tutorial. Mobile phones are different from desktop web applications in that the real estate available for the phone applications is usually limited and there is no support for the mouse. The users operate an application use, using their fingers instead. As a result, you are likely to create a separate version of your application, the one that uses screen real estate differently compared to the desktop application. It is important to emphasize, though, that all features of AVRIM available for desktop applications are available for phone applications as well. It is just that when developing phone applications, you are likely to use certain features more than others. In this tutorial, we will explain what these features are. Note also that your desktop applications are likely to work as is on tablets. Alternatively, you can create a tablet-specific version of your application. The choice is yours. So most of the time, your phone web application is just a version of your desktop application. We recommend that you develop your desktop web application first without worrying too much about its phone incarnation. Once your desktop ORM application is ready, you should carefully think through which features of the application will be available on mobile phones. You should then make changes to your ORM configuration elements to support these features. Some of your configuration elements, such as business objects, business rules, notifications and access levels, do not need to be changed as you would only need to change those elements that are presented to the user, such as visual perspectives, forms, queries, and some processes. To make it clearer, I will show you how the phone version of the CRM sample application has been developed. Let's have a look at the final result first, and then I will explain how this result has been achieved. I will be showing the application in a desktop browser, but it will work in exactly the same way on the phone. Once the user logs in, he sees a list of all customers. The user can search for a particular customer He can also tap on the menu button next to the record of the customer and the pop-up menu will be displayed. He can then click on the details and see the form of the customer. He can also click on map and the Google map with the address of the customer will be displayed. He can click on contact node to record details of the communication with the customer or click on enlarge photo We also here have a little help screen and a slide out application menu. In this menu we can create record of the new customer or we can display a list of current alerts. We can display a diary a graph with some statistics or a gallery view where the user can swipe the screen from one customer to the other. Now let's see how this has been configured. Everything starts with a visual perspective and we have a special visual perspective for mobile phones called mobile. If we click on the using in login property and look at the platform support section, we will see that this visual perspective has been marked as phones only. So it will only be used when the user logs in from a mobile phone. 
The visual perspective displays a query called Customer All Mobile. Let's have a look at this query. It's a custom query, as you can see. You will be using custom queries a lot in your phone applications to display lists with pictures and text. There are two template formats here, custom data template and custom mobile template. You can use both, but they are implemented by different widgets and have different capabilities. The former supports both horizontal and vertical layouts, while the latter only supports vertical lay layout. But the mobile template also supports some features that are especially useful on mobile phones. Grouping with headers, simple filtering, a button with a pop-up mobile style menu. This is the template that has been used here. The body of the template contains an HTML snippet that will be repeated for each record in the list. The snippet has been based on one of the predefined ones that you can select as a starting point. You can refer to the attributes of the object in curly brackets. If we go to the display settings property of the query, we will see the grouping feature specific to the mobile template. The grouping here will be performed based on the first letter of the name. The query also has a filter defined for it. We're filtering by last name here. There are also operations with records defined for the query. If we look at them, we will see that they are placed on a pop-up menu displayed next to the selected record. If we look at the details operation, we will see that it shows a phone-specific form called Editing Mobile. Let's have a look at this form. If we look at this form, we will see that it is really not that special. The difference with most desktop forms is that it uses a single column and the label width for the column has been specified as percentage rather than as absolute value. Tabs of the form have been marked as having a mobile style. This makes them larger and icons are displayed with top alignment. To save real estate, the caption of the form has been placed in the top bar. You can see how this looks in the browser. The caption of the form is displayed in the top application bar. Note also the traversal buttons here. They allow the user to move to the next or previous customer. These buttons are only displayed when the form is displayed. When the form is hidden, the buttons are hidden as well. This has been achieved by specifying a special location for the traversal operation of the form. If we look at the panel operations of the form, we can see that for the first, next, previous and last operations, the location has been specified as top application menu. In this case, 
where I will automatically add panel operations of the form to the application menu when the form is displayed, and it will remove them automatically when the form is hidden. Let's see now how the application menu has been configured. The bar displayed at the top of the application has been placed into the top bar frame of the visual perspective. It has three items, the menu button, the back button and the help button. The back button is easy. All we have to do is just define the operation of the go back type. The menu button and the help button are slightly more difficult. In order for the menu button to display a menu that slides in from the left edge of the screen, the menu has to be defined first in the left frame of the visual perspective. The type of this menu should be plain list and the operations should invoke the appropriate queries or processes. Going back to the menu button. For this button to display a slide in menu, an operation of the slide in left frame type must be defined. At runtime, when the user clicks on the menu button, a variable will slide in the menu defined in the left frame. If you remember, the help button displays a short help message which slides in from the right edge of the screen. This can be achieved by defining the help message as a content panel inside the right frame. The content panel just displays some static HTML. And then when we define the help button, we specify the command that slides in the contents of the right frame. That's all we have to do to define our mobile menus. Let me say a few words about the gallery view operation that allows users to swipe the screen from one customer to another. This is achieved again in a custom query. In this case, the query uses the custom data template. All you need to do is define your HTML snippet for the picture and then tick the display mobile scroll view checkbox in the display settings of the query. Hopefully, by now you should have a pretty good idea on how to develop mo mobile applications in a where I am. Let me just quickly go through some other features that can be especially useful for mobile applications. A visual perspective has an option to show mobile transitions between pages. When this is ticked, pages are shown using a special animation which is very popular on mobile phones. Dates and times in forms can be shown using native browser controls rather than a where I am controls. Some browsers have very advanced capabilities when displaying dates and times. An attribute of, of a yes and no type can be displayed as a switch. Again, this is very popular on mobile phones. Attributes implemented as combo boxes have an option to be displayed with a mobile style. 
When the user clicks on such a drop-down, the choices pop up from the bottom edge of the screen, similar to what we have seen for our customer pop-up menu. And finally, processes have an option to display intermediate steps in the current tab rather than in a pop-up window. Usually, when a process displays a form or a grid, it displays them in a pop-up window. Pop-up windows can be problematic on mobile phones, so there is an option to display intermediate steps in the current tab instead. With all these features, you can create really powerful mobile applications with a Wear AM.